Hey everyone, welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I've got a fun card for you today with pineapples. Now if you've looked around, you're gonna see how trendy they are. They're on bedspreads and pillows and blankets just about everywhere. And Stampin' Up! has jumped on that bag wagon with that trend. And here is the cute card that I'm gonna be sharing with you today. I'm gonna to be sharing with you how to do some 3D work on those upper leaves and some variegated color on the pineapple itself. Let's get over the stamp table and let's get started. Now that we're at the stamp table, you can get a closer look at the detail with this really pretty gold metallic thread. It plays up that um, mustardy color of the yellow in this pineapple. But I wanna show you how to put the card together. I'm starting with a piece of crumb cake cardstock. This is five and a half by eight and a half and I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna use my bone folder to get that nice crisp crease. This paper comes from the Affectionately Yours Designer Series paper stack, and like all the Stampin' Up! papers, they're double-sided. Really pretty, huh? So that's going to go here. Then I've cut a piece of Whisper White cardstock to mirror this, and this is two and a half by five and one quarter. Remember, I have all the cutting dimensions over on my blog, as well as still photographs. You don't have to worry about writing them down now. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna use Cucumber Crush ink for the top of the pineapple. But you're gonna see that the pineapple actually is on one stamp, and that is exactly how it comes. It is in one stamp. But I'm gonna show you how to piecemeal this to make this work really easily for you. So let's open this up, and I'm gonna concentrate just inking the top portion of this pineapple stem. Now, a little bit of green on the overage is not gonna make a difference because we're not gonna see it when we're done. I have better luck stamping this way than trying to go vertical. I don't know why I always have, I'm vertically challenged, I guess. And I am going to place that here, and it's a big stamp. So you're gonna to wanna to place lots of firm, even pressure, and you don't wanna rock it. So we've got that, look, I got a little tiny smudge because I was a little zealous, but that probably happens to you too. We're not gonna worry about that. I'm also going to take a piece of scrap white. And you know what? Okay, how many of you confess that you do this at home? You take your finger, right? And you clean that off. And I'm gonna be a little bit more careful this time. I'm inking up the bottom part here of that pineapple stem. Because I'm gonna do a little bit of a 3D effect on that stem in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna take this into my stamp and scrub. It is off camera. Um, very limited space when we're filming, but one side's wet, one side's dry. I'll put a picture of the Stampin' Scrub if you're not familiar with it over on my blog. So we've got the piece that we're working on. We've got this one, and now we're gonna work on the bottom. So we're gonna use Daffodil Delight and Soft Suede. So we're gonna ink up the bottom half in the daffodil. And I'm using another piece of scrap white cardstock. But I want to add some tone to that pineapple like I did here originally. So you're going to use a dauber. Your finger goes inside. I'm going to ink it up. And I'm going to tap off here on my scratch paper just a little bit because I don't want it too, too dark. And I am randomly going to place ink. Now you're going to see I'm wiping this off because I don't want to transfer the yellow to here on my pineapple. And... Obviously, the more you do, the more brown that you're going to have. Now, you're going to have to huff on the stamp. <sighs> I call that the Darth Vader technique. This is dye-based ink, and it tends to dry very quickly, so that just helps to re-moisten it. So there we go. Now we've got some variation in the color. I'm going to set those ink pads aside and the dauber, and I'm going to take my scissors. For those of you that don't like to fussy cut, this is super easy because literally it's less than an oval. Leave a little bit of white cardstock around the pineapple. It's not so important at the top because most of that's gonna be hidden when we're finished. So I'm just cutting around the pineapple and we are actually gonna attach this piece to the top piece in just a minute. On the back side, I'm gonna grab my dimensionals. I have some small pieces here in the studio left over. And I'm gonna take off that paper backing. So now our pineapple is pieced together, but let's talk about this piece right here. I am actually going to cut out a couple of these bottom petals. Keep in mind that if you don't like this, you don't have to do this. This is not something you need to do, but I liked the dimension this created uh, when my card was finished. So I'm just gonna pick off a few petals 
And again, right here, I'm just gonna cut around, again, leaving some white space. This is where I'm gonna add my gold thread. So I'm gonna take a bigger dimensional this time. Let me fish those out. I'm gonna put that right here in the center, and I'm gonna take off the paper backing. So now I've got my gold metallic thread. Now, a lot of you tell me you love this stuff, but you don't know how to use it. And I'm gonna tell you, the more you think about it, the more frustrating it's gonna get. So don't think about it. I'm sticking the end on the dimensional, and all I'm really doing is I'm kind of making a figure eight. I'm just gonna be real whimsical about this. The messier it is, actually the better that it looks. So I'm just gonna put some little loops here and there. And you get a lot of this, so you don't have to worry that you're wasting it because there's a ton on that roll. And so I've got some loops going. And let's see, are we happy with that? Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna cut this off. Set that aside. I'm going back to my smaller pieces of dimensional because I wanna add a few more in here to make sure that it's plenty sticky enough. Peel off that paper backing. And now this is gonna go here over my original pineapple stem. So I'm just gonna line up those the best that I can, even if they're off a little bit, it doesn't matter. What does that bug me? Look at, boy, I'm having a rough day. Tell me you guys have gone through this, right? Let's do the greeting now. This is a piece of crumb cake cardstock. It's just a scrap. And I'm actually gonna use the soft suede ink one more time. And I love this banner, this banner is actually part of an entire stamp set that's called Thoughtful Banners. So you get lots of different banner choices, and here's the beautiful part. These three all fit the Duet Banner Punch. Of all the things I've bought that are new, I have to say that this has probably been my go-to stamp set and punch right now. I'm loving it because look at all the possibilities for phrases and greetings. This one fits a brand new punch as well, and there it is. I so took the words, celebrate from the same stamp set. And I've mounted them on a clear block, but you're gonna see how this is a little bit on an arc and this is a little bit straight. Yeah, sure, it's gonna work, but I'm gonna teach you a little trick. I'm gonna stamp the words in the cucumber, but I wanna arc to this. So I'm gonna actually pick up the photopolymer and I'm gonna bend it slightly on top of my block. Do you see how it has a slight curve here? I'm gonna ink it up. You'll be able to see it a little bit better. Look it, isn't that neat? One thing you can do with photopolymer that you can't do with other stamps. And then I'm gonna stamp that right in the center. I'm gonna use that duet banner punch. And I think I'm gonna to have to cut that bottom away to make it fit. So let me do that real quick. That is gonna go inside here. The nice thing about punches is that you can lightly squeeze this and it locks the paper in place before you actually punch. So it's a great tip for positioning. So now we've got those and here come those little handy dandy dimensional pieces I keep. So we're going to put a couple on the back and that's going to go here across the front of my pineapple. And now I'm going to mount the pieces, little dimensional pieces. You guys have those too when you craft, don't you? I think they're statically charged. So they stick to everything. Funniest spot I've ever found them in is in the dishwasher, the shower, and on the front stoop. Yes, everywhere, I find them everywhere. So I'm just gonna get a visual idea of where these pieces are gonna go before I adhere it and kind of go crazy. So I am going to stick this one here. You know what I say, if it's perfect, it's not homemade. And so now you get to see all the mistakes that I make here in the studio because you know what? I am just like you, completely human. So here's the one we made with our little schmutz mark on and here is the one that I made originally. You can see I've concentrated my threads here at the top. This one goes out a little bit more on the side. I'm not sure which way you like the thread better. It's kind of neat, isn't it? Go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know what you think. And remember that I offer great online classes. The information's on my blog. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. Have a great day, despite the smudge.